Good morning, Free Motion Friday fans. Today is Kit and Kabuto Project Part 6. So if you can hear me and you can see well, I'm going to go ahead and wait just a moment so we can adjust the camera, make sure that people can hear us before we start, and then we will get going. Good morning, Linda Richard. Nice to have you here. So tell me, are you already free motioning? Are you getting started? Do you feel like this will add to your repertoire or you're just interested to see where it goes? Good morning, Nana. So good to see you. I hope it's not a early or late for you. I never know what time is what. Sone CB, Marilyn from Montrose. You can hear me. Okay, good. You're the first person to say that. So <laughs> glad that you could hear me. Good evening. Hi, Christina from Sweden. Maybe you are a friend of Nana's. Rita Skinner, you're a talented lady. I love seeing what you're doing too. Okay, so we will not delay. We'll get started. We've got some people here. Um, let me show you a couple of the ideas that we're playing with. So my plan for today is to work on some of these corners that are right here. And I think that these little triangles are, are cute, but they're empty. So I really want to put some additional quilting in those spaces as well. So this seems like a big space to be open compared to some of the other spaces that we've done. So this would look a little bit outsized compared to some of the other areas. All right. So let's go ahead and start with the corner over here. So I've, I've done my play, you know. I think it's important for you to try different things and see, do you like it? <laughs> because I'll be the first one to admit, I'm not good at everything. I think that um, one of the revelations when I started becoming a long armor is people would bring you a quilt and they'd be like, well, I want you to do this and I want this and I want that. And I'm like, mm, great. I don't think I can do that. I think you need to ask somebody else. They have this mentality that, oh, if you're a long armor, you can just do anything. And maybe some people can, but most people don't want to pay for those people. So the reality is that I have certain amount of skills and I always want to push those a little bit more, but I need to also kind of stay within where my zone is, where I'm comfortable, where my skills are, and my own style. Not every single quilt speaks to you. And sometimes if it's not your style, it's a lot harder to quilt it because it doesn't feel like you. So I've tried a couple of different things and I'm just gonna mention one of them real quick. Let's start. Right here, I think this is very cool. I love this. This is a chain link, uh, sort of a wishbone or fill. So we'll, we're gonna do this. I really like it. It's very hard when it's really tiny. So in the corner, I'm just gonna put like a little kind of circly wiggle to get out a little bit so that I can make a shape because nobody's gonna really see that anyway. Just overlap a little bit, right? And then you can start the design out here. When I did this, I love it. I think it looks awesome. And then when I do it over here, hmm, not as awesome because I feel like it's more open here and then here, I feel like you're crowding it, right? It, I don't like it. So I decided that I definitely want to do it here and I'm not going to make it fight with this one. So what I decided is that on the other side, in that middle row, I'm just going to do some straight lines like that, some curvy lines. This is the 12 inch arc. So I'm going to sort of split this in the middle. This is a half inch space. So I'm going to put one line in the middle and then I'll split that and do a line on each side. And if there's more room, I'll even put another line in. And that will create a fill in this middle space. So we'll have fill, open, fill, open. Now, we'll talk about this part later. Let's go ahead and work on this part, and then we'll do this part. Can't offer too many things at one time, right? My brain goes into overload. I can't do it. Oh, the weather is nice and cold. Stay at home, quilt. It'll keep you warm and you'll be working out your upper body. Okay, so let's talk about the design. Let me grab some paper real quick. A little copy something. All right, here's a little bit of something, some paper. I'm recycling. 
Okay. And pencil. So I prefer pencil or something with friction. You don't want these ultra smooth ballpoint pen type of thing or super frictionless ink pen. What you want is you need to feel the texture because when you're sewing, you're going to feel that. So if I have to work a little bit harder to push the design, that's gonna make it better in terms of training. So when this first one, you kind of have to start somewhere. You gotta make your shape. I'm going the wrong way, go this way. Okay, so I'm gonna sort of make this come around a little bit and I want this to overlap a little bit. So I'm thinking ahead, as I get to this point, I wanna come out enough that I can overlap. That's the chain link right there. So this part right here, he's gonna extend beyond it, but he has to come back a little bit so that he can overlap. And these can be round, I like them round, but they don't have to be round, they can be lanky too. Like if you wanted to make them like flatter like this. I, I don't prefer that, but you can do it. There's nothing wrong with that. I like them to, to stretch out a little bit because that leaves this open and then there's just a little tiny tightness around the bottom like that. And you can make them bigger too, see? Look, watch this, bigger. It's about how round you stretch out your little loop-de-loop. -loop. And I have to admit that I have a particular size that my hand feels comfortable doing, and that's pretty much what I do. So kind of like it like right in here somewhere where you get this little orange peel. And then this is open, and that's what I really like. So let's try that. I don't know, can I do it? I did it already on paper. <laughs> so maybe I could do it on my sewing. Ready? Let's go. Okay, um, this is on this part right here. So we'll start in the corner and we'll get going. I did test my machine this morning. I actually put in a new needle so that everything would be good for you guys. So when you've been sewing a lot, which I often do, as soon as your needle starts giving you that funky sound, you wanna like put a new one in there. So right in these smaller spaces, we need a little bit of more movement, a little bit faster. Right about there is now where we can start overlapping. So I'm gonna work on that overlap now. And I'm gonna open that overlap up as we move out to where there's more space. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger so it'll be tighter in the corner and that's okay, I want that. Keep the rhythm of your machine going. Okay, that's what's gonna allow you to move smoothly. So I'm looking ahead so I can just get that little overlap right there, my little orange peel. Okay, ah, guess what? I need to move my hands. So I'm going to, I'm gonna get resituated, scooch up, choke up a little bit. I tried to stop right in the middle of the loop so that when I start again, I can make that round. Starting to get tight. So I'm gonna just try and stretch them out as best I can. But they are gonna get tight, because we know that, because the space is getting smaller. So I'm gonna just kind of go as much as I can. Once I get down to that point where I really can't even make that S, I'm just gonna kind of make it a little curvy right into the corner. Okay, so let's see what how we did. Let's tack this off. I'll pull it up and let you see. So this thread is pretty forgiving. Would I wanna do this with red thread? No, I wouldn't. <laughs> Honestly, I wouldn't. I mean, I'm, I can quilt. I'm, I'm fairly confident that I can make something pretty, but would I want this to be in red? Not a chance. Okay, so that's what you get. You get those little overlaps. You can see they're a little bit more defined right in the center there. 
and they look so cute. And they're close to the edge, but they're not trying to go over. So there's a tiny little gap. If they touch, I don't care, whatever, it's fine, right? It's gonna be fun. Okay, so we've done that part. And then let's go ahead and we'll do the little fill in here. And what I wanted, let's go ahead and mark it out is I started trying to do, let me show you, the dot method, my dot method that I've explained many times. Let's explain it again. If I wanted a fill, I put a dot. So fill, 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 fill. So it's gonna be like this little overlap. Well, I decided I didn't want that. <laughs> I, I felt like there would be too much going on in here and that it wouldn't really uh, match up here because of the way that these go. This doesn't go all the way down. So you kind of lose your alternation here. So I decided after I figured that out, I'm not gonna do that at all. I'm just gonna do the little arc. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you the pattern to make it continuous. So from this point, you would do arc, 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 drop down a row, and you're gonna go to this intersection. Here is where you can go up and down, arc, up and down, arc to this next point. And then you'll go arc, 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 and drop down. And then here you'll do the up, down, over, up, down, over, and you'll be at the next row. So then arc, 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 and drop down. Then over, up, down, over, up, down, and then you'll be finished, right? So we'll be continuous from this point all the way down to there. So since we're gonna integrate this little part right here, what I think is good would be to go one, two, three, and then we'll fill this bottom. So all of those little arcs, the whole thing will be continuous. Okay, let's get started. So that does require this to me, that's a long arc. And the longer the arc is, the less comfortable I am doing it freehand. I can do a small arc, but this is very visible and it's right near this center motif. So people's eyes are gonna go right to that. So what I typically want with something like this is, if I were to use this, it's very deep. It kind of fits in there, but look at how fur further into the space it intrudes. We don't want that. So if I use a larger arc like this, See how it's gonna be shallower? It's actually too big for the space, but it's perfect for what I want. And the bigger that I go, which I think this one's too big, well, I don't know, maybe that would be perfect. If you start with your foot there and that's your quarter inch, I think that might be great because that would make it shallow. So it's a little bit longer here. Maybe we do the three inch on this side. We'll go ahead and try that. So, what did we say? We want to end right there. So let's go ahead and we'll go this way and then we'll keep going. The other thing that that path will do is that path is gonna mean that we're gonna stitch over our start point also. So then we'll know that our start point is secure because we'll have extra stitches right on top of it. All right, and hopefully I'll see the chats in a minute. <laughs> My internet is so slow lately. Ever since they put the new upgrade up, I can hardly do anything. I think we said four, right? So we use the big one. So this is why I like to use my ruler foot pretty much all the time. Oh, let's go down one. I think we want a little bit more curve in there. So right there, we wanna be right at with our spacing gauge. I do wanna come pretty much right into this corner. Okay, so I'm gonna try to use that. And I've sort of got this kind of lined up in the middle right there, okay? So here we go. So it is a very shallow arc, just what I wanted. And I like that because then these little arcs are not gonna overlap, which I don't want. It's not that you can't do that, it's in the spaces down below, it's really tight and they aren't gonna overlap. So I kinda want the same look for this top part. So just adjust that a little bit so that that arc will bring me right into the corner. I'm using two hands to control that movement right there. I'm right into my corner. And then we'll get back to this side. I'll turn it just a little bit so you guys can see how, let's see if we can get you in there a little tighter. Okay, so right there, I'm gonna line it up right to that point. I've got this basically in the center. 
And then we'll just angle this right here to get us right to the corner. Oh, that little thing in there is driving me nuts. I'm gonna have to take him off later because he's making me crazy. He just wanders around and does his own thing. All right, here we go. Always take that first stitch. Maybe you see that, like I wait. I take the first stitch before I move. That way I can make sure that things are actually going where I want them to. I'm gonna cut these threads and get them out of the way. So as we continue to sew, I won't have them in my way now. We are gonna go ahead and tack right over that. So I'll just cut them right here just to get them a little bit out of the way. These arcs now are pretty small. So when I'm doing them, I want to make sure that I make them all the way at one time. As I come to this intersection, what you wanna do is just look ahead and make that arc all in one movement, okay? So I'm gripping right here and I'm keeping myself steady. I'm looking ahead, start your guess and make your narrow arc. Make your narrow arc all the way to that corner, all the way to that corner and then drop down the reason that we want them so narrow is we are trying to have them not overlap. That way at the corners, when they come in, they won't cross over, they'll make a nice little orange peel. So right there, and then now, next one, I'm at that next corner, up to the top, and drop down, and over to the other side. Okay, nice and smooth. Oh, did I go out? Oh, doggone it, I sure did. I don't know, that's fine. Let's let's tack it off and we'll just move down. Bon bon time. Okay, so we're on this next row in one, two, three. And since I lost my mind, let's count. One, two, three, and then we'll drop down and go to the center. Okay, so now up, down. And then this is the second one. And then we'll go up to the top and drop down. And this is the last one. Now, on this row right here, all of these arcs are not finished. What we'll do is we're gonna finish all of this and we'll come back and we'll close that when we're done. Okay, so on this part now, drop down to the next row. One, two, three and down to the bottom long stretch on that one and then back up to your center position and then arc up to the top and down to the bottom across to the center and one two and the last one Okay, so we've got all of these arcs in and we're down at this bottom and all the ones right here, we need to fill those in now, right? So one, two, three. So we've got all of those filled in and look where we're at location wise. We wanna fill this in and remember what we said, we are gonna go center and back and then we wanna go out again so we will probably have to travel on, on some path in order to get over to the other side, okay? So let's just scoot down. We'll just freehand it down to the next arc. And we said this is using the 12 inch arc. And since this is a half inch space, if we line it right up, you'll see that this foot fits right in that channel. I'm gonna turn it so you can see it a little better. Right, so we, we said we're gonna do straight lines, so let's get our arc out. This is the shape right here. If I line it right up on the existing stitch line like that, my foot fits right in that channel, which means that this stitch line will be right in the middle. Okay, so we'll just go right over to this side. Okay, now, challenging part here is gonna be to get this to line up right in the middle, right? So what we can do actually is we can move this down and let me show you something that's rarely used. Okay, we rarely, we rarely do this. We want our measure to be one eighth of an inch from this space, right? This is where we were. We want to align just a little bit down. This spacing gauge has a one eighth inch measure, 
right? So let's go ahead and we'll use the 1 8 inch measure. Oh, you guys, I got to take that off. It's making me crazy. Can't even do anything with it. Okay, here we go. That was from my trip, so now he's off. Maybe I'll never find him again. Okay. Right? One eighth. So I'm going to line up the ruler one eighth inch away in two places right there. By lining the ruler up first, that's telling where the foot position needs to be in order to do this next arc. Right? So let's go ahead and we're going to sew right down that seam line until we are touching with the foot. See, it was only a few stitches. Right now, we should then be able to stitch right in the middle of that arc right there. And that's gonna make it pretty symmetrical, nice and even, right? So same thing, now we wanna do the other side because we wanna split that same thing in the middle. I'll show you one more time. Now here, the alignment from the center position with the arc would be like that. And we want to push that a little bit up so we can actually line it up on this one eighth right here, right? It's one eighth below. So let's see if we can actually get our ruler right in there. Right there. And I'm lined right up on that existing line that we just did. And now I've got my line right here in the middle. Okay, so let's show you the travel path now since we did this one and we wanna to get to the other side, okay? A nice easy way to do it that doesn't require us to stitch back here and navigate all the way around there is to sew right down until we get to it. We already have our straight edge ruler. We can be right in the ditch right there and we just sew right over. Nobody will see it. Our thread is nice and small and thin. It matches pretty well. So we'll just sew right down until we get to that spot. We wanna start in the middle. So we want our foot to be right in the middle of the channel. So we'll do it right there, the foot's touching. And that is the space that we need to fit this right in the center of the channel. So if you look at it now, see how the foot is basically right in the middle. This one looks a little wonky. I don't care, it'll work out. Okay, so we'll just line it up right on the stitch line right there get our foot right in position and we'll sew right over. Okay, then just like we said, we'll just scoot this down and we're using that 1 8 inch and we're gonna make the ruler tell us where we need to be, right? So we'll do that first. Do you need me to switch that? I'm gonna flip it. Oh, Ronnie, I'm sorry. Sometimes I have terrible Wi-Fi too. We're in a, a new subdivision and there is not a lot of good signal there. Okay, so the ruler's in position. That 1 8 inch, right, we just moved a very small amount. So now if I just scoot down one or two stitches so that my foot is now touching, we should be able to stitch right in the middle of that space and fill that right in right there, okay? And now as we move up, we want to be in the middle of the top part, so I'll just move up a little bit visually. And what we want to align the ruler is right where the foot is on that existing stitch line that we just made since we moved over 1 8. If we use that as the alignment right there, that's how we can line right up in the middle of this space right here. I'll show you what it's going to look like right here. This is that quarter inch. So I think this side went up just a little bit too far on the back. That's what we want. We want to be right in the middle of that space right there. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll put that in. Let's move that out of the way. Can you see there's a little thread right there? There we go. Okay, we're right in that middle of that space. Okay, now I'm going to show you one last little piece on this. Let me cut this thread. And we're in a good spot right now to move up to this last little space that we want to work on. So I'm getting everything out of my way so we can do it. Okay, so let's talk about our fill empty proposition, right? So I, I guess I started to start on the wrong side. Where's my little design? Oh, I did. Huh. I started on another one. I don't know what I'm doing. 
I wondered why I was working where all the markings were. On this one, I want to fill in the little arcs with just a little bit of scribble. And the reason I want to do that is we have open, fill, open, and we want this little thing to be filled and the center to be open. So right here, all I'm going to do now that I've got my reference line of sewing in there, I'm just going to follow it and I'm just going to come back one more time and right on the stitch line. So I'm just filling in my orange peel and I'm going to do the same on this side. Okay, so we'll fill this in, come up one or two stitches until we get to the arc. So I'm using the arc as the reference and just working towards the, the more prominent seam, the one with the color. And then I'll just come back until I get to the bottom. Okay, and then we'll do this last one right here. And again, you know, using the arc that you've already made as your reference line, I can see it. I know it's hard to see for you guys too because there's all that marking, but I'm just gonna fill it in. And what you can do is when you're finished, this one's a little bit wider than the other one. So if I find that there's not enough fill or there's a little gap in the fill, you can look at it. So I can see maybe like right here, one of my little arcs didn't quite punch down what I wanted. So I'm just gonna come back in with just a little bit more stitching and we'll just punch that down. All right, and let's micro tack. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So that way there'll, there'll be a little bit more uh, punch right there, a little bit more visual interest, and that little curvy triangle will be the part that pops up, which I think is cute. All right. So let's see how we did. I'm going to flip it over. Oh, I love it. Looks cute. So sadly, we didn't do it with our little, um, the same one with our little chain link, right? You won't be able to see it with the chain link, but let's see if we can put a little angle on there. So what I want to do with this section is I want to put this cute little flower in here, right? And make this into more of a floral kind of a look. So what I think I'm actually gonna do is this feather portion in all of these. I tried this circle, but I don't really think that that enhances anything. So rather than try to put a bunch of different elements in this corner, I decided I'm gonna use the same element and that'll create a little bit more unity. So when we do this first part right here in the orange peel, what I'm looking for is I wanna put a little bit of a vague teardrop right there and I'm just gonna echo over the top to create a little separation okay thanks for rejoining you guys I'm not sure what happened and there's there was nothing I could do there's no buttons I could push so I decided that rather than just have us keep going and not be able to hear it would be better if we just restarted so what I'll do is I'll cut these videos together later and edit them so that they all are all seamless and then we'll just continue from there. Okay, so what we're doing here is we're gonna put these feathers in and we're not gonna put these other ones. We're gonna keep this all unified with a very similar design. So we're gonna start right here in the center. I put a vague center line down the middle. So I'll show you on this side, right? We're just marking the center and what we're gonna do is make a little teardrop kind of in the middle of this space. And I can tell right now that mine's not even on these two sides. So I don't care, it's, it's not gonna be even. As long as it looks nice, I'm not too worried about that. So let's just pick up our thread kind of right here, vaguely, not at the bottom. We don't wanna be all the way at the bottom there. We want to be a little bit further up because that's where our arc is gonna start. There's no reason to start way back down there if we don't need to. Okay, so I'm just gonna tack that in and I'm just gonna make a little bit of a loop right there. And then I'm gonna come back. And that's that little double arc on the inside. So let's make sure that you guys can see it really good. 
Okay, so this is what we did. We just made a double little arc. Now, this line, its function is when I am making my feathers, I'm gonna use that as the start and stop line for each side. So I'm actually tracing back up on this one so I can kind of get the nice arc right in there. Okay, come down to the bottom. And here, I'm gonna kind of come around a little bit. I'm making space for this next one. Always, when you make your feather, you need a little bit of roundness, okay? So I'll put just a few little circles right in here to kind of give the idea, right? So if I'm trying to sew up to the feather from this side, I have to come around and make that little roundness. And then here, this is the round part where I'm coming back like that. So if this was the next one, you know, I can either start here and come around or I can sort of angle up to it and make it around. And then there's the next circle right there. So that circle mentality, that's what I did right now. What you don't want is that this comes up, like if this is the next one, if I come up, see that I'm losing the roundness? I need this to come back in. I can't just come and touch it. I've gotta have that very notable curvature right there that defines the top right there of the feather. So if I cut right through there, it's like this is a half of a circle right there. Okay, so I've already done this one and he's touching the one below. So we're gonna come back over to that other half circle and we'll put the last one in like that. Okay, now as I go down, let's turn this a little bit so you can see better. Okay, I've got the one side feathered and I wanna put just a little bit of detail in the feather as I come down. So I'll cut these off. I'm gonna be following this side and when I get to the center of the feather, I'm just gonna put a little flourish in. So here we go. Okay, so little flourish and a little baby flourish. Okay, so little flourish and a little baby one. Okay, and a little flourish, and a little baby one. Okay, now I wanna go to the other side. Okay, so there's my little feather, if you guys can see that right there. There's my little flourishes right there, and now we need to sew the other side. The quickest way to get to this other side is gonna be to travel right on the existing line right here. and I wanna be on this far side, just a few stitches so that these kind of match up. If you want them the exact same height, you can put in a reference line. I don't really wanna work that hard. So, especially since they're not even already. So there's my little loop. I'm gonna kind of pull down, okay? And then I'm gonna come back up to the top and I'll make the next one. And I'll come out a little bit on this side and put that last one in there. Okay. And then we'll travel back down, put my little flourish in and my little baby, come back down. Sort of wanna be at the base of this feather. So little flourish and a little baby and down to the last one. If you want to fill down in this bottom part, you could. I'm gonna leave it open because I think there's enough going on for this design. So when I did the last one, we said that we're gonna go ahead and put feathers down in the bottom. So let's do the bottom part and we'll put that in. We'll come right down to here. Let me show you on the other one. Let me show you the design. It's right here. Okay, this is what we're going for, okay? So I'm using this part as the spine. So the first one's gonna sort of teardrop out and then they're all on this boundary line. So the curve line is the spine, okay? So as we travel out, we said that we're gonna come back 
to the curved line each time. So we'll make our little teardrop right there. It's curved and we'll come back and then make this part round and stretch it back. Okay, again, I can stretch it, make it round as it touches that other one. Dip out and in to make sure you've got that round shape. Here's the next one, touch around the circle and just making that last little one kind of round. And we'll come back and we'll put our flourishes in on this side. One and a baby and then one and a baby and one, curve it a little bit and the baby and one and his partner. And from here, we can just put one right there and then put one at the bottom. All right, so hopefully you can see that. And I, I'm gonna match that up on the other side. And then right in this space, I think it would be useful to go ahead and put, you know, same thing, some type of little feather or even some fill. Then you've got this open space. You've got a fill here. And here, I'm just gonna echo this to put a little more three-dimensionality in there. So let's go ahead and we'll do that. We'll just come up. Okay, and this is the spine right here. So again, I'm gonna use that same relationship, put a little arc in there. And then we'll just fill this a little bit on the top. So there's my flourish, another flourish here, and the flourish right there. Okay, I'm gonna come all the way up to the top here. I'm gonna start basically in the seam to do this flourish. And the way I wanna do it is I'm gonna leave it more open here, about 1 8th, and then come back to the center. So I'm grading from the actual start of the arc, getting a little wider, going sort of right to the middle, and then I'm gonna grade right to the seam on there. And I'm not gonna fill that in, but that's just gonna give a little puff right there, and I'm gonna actually come around and I'll do this other side, and then we can travel in and do the feathers on this other side. Okay. This is kind of a long way to travel, so I'll go ahead and I'll use my straight edge. Right to the tip, and then coming right out to the other one right there. So I'm right at the intersection of the design, and starting at this curve with the same thread, the, the variegated thread, and grading a little bit away, just to create about a 1 8th of an inch width and then here, gently grading back to that corner to just to put a little three-dimensionality into that area, okay? So from where we are now, we need to be at this position so I can actually just travel and get right on in. Don't be afraid to travel. It's so useful. And then this is our seam, so we'll just come out. We'll make our first little arc right there. arc around, and that next one right there. Okay, and there's the flourish right there. Come down, another one, and then right down in the center. And then look where I'm at. I'm right in the right position to do this last one. So our path is filling this all up perfectly. This is the spine. We're gonna go ahead and put that little teardrop in right there for the first one. Make sure he's round and then come back to that circle and back to that spine. We can travel out for the next one. Round, make the tip of your feather round. He's got to come in so you get that very defined feather shape. 
And then here on the way back, we'll put our little flourish and the baby. Come back, flourish, and the little baby. And travel just a little bit more. And then we'll put just a couple little flourishes right there in the center. One and two. And we'll tack it off right there and we'll be done. All right, let's see if we can show you. come out just a little bit the other way right there you go can you see it let's see if we can pull it up over the top here we go there you go what do you think does that look good so we just get these nice little textures in here it's a little bit open there there's a nice split and here we just put a little extra detail in to make this look a little bit more three-dimensional. And because this is so open, I think I'll probably do that same three-dimensional echo right in here, just to make this part a little three-dimensional as well. And that'll take up a little bit of this space right here as well, because it seems pretty open. And then I think um, I might do some little straight lines right in here too, because that will make this compressed, which will set these off right there. So those are just some little ideas for how you can do sort of a little feathered space and it, it has good direction. Like these are symmetrical, these come into the center and these kind of go outward. So just a little bit of fun flourishing there for that design. Um, we are at 1047. Let's see if there's something quick that we can do. Um, hmm. Okay, yeah, let's do one more. We'll do one more. All right. I like this area and I want it to have a little bit more um, fill in here. I don't want it to be quite so empty. This already is a really nice frame that sets these two areas apart. So I don't really need to create another one. So all of these kind of angle that way. All of the little curves are like this. They're kind of swirling in, in that direction, this way. So what I thought I'd do is I'm gonna put a little crazy thing in here. And let's just make it up right now. I, I did it, let's see if it's drawn on the back. It's kind of like this, right there. Right there, so it's still gonna be a little bit open around this seam, but I thought this would be kind of fun. So it's countering the movement of this by swirling the other way. So because this is symmetrical, I kind of want to start in the middle. I'm going to do one circle and then another circle. And you can do however many, like how big it is. You could actually put another one if you wanted to. I'm probably only going to do two. And then I'm going to put some little loops in there like this. And here it's really tall. So I'll do maybe one more, and then you can make this one curve the other direction. Make this one fill up the space with a little curl, and you're gonna come back, and then you can just finish your little flower right there. So kind of trying to make this round. These are kind of long. Don't, don't worry about making these long. Think about this as round. So don't necessarily stretch those. This little guy will stretch up to fit the triangle on the box on the top there. He's the one that's gonna do that extra work. And then he's a nice little counter for these little ribbons. So we're gonna make him similar, and that way this whole design has a little bit of a unity feel to it. So I know that's kind of messy, we'll do it right here. And of course I would you know, do them all, all three of them, and I would just start here and go across and finish them out. But we probably will just do one, we don't have a lot of time. Okay, tacking the circle a little bit right there. 
So I like to make the outer circle first. That's just my pre preferred. And then filling it in with a little circle. Okay. And then I'm going to come out and just make some little loops right there. Make my little flower petals. And here I'm just going to swirl out and make my little ribbon and then kind of come back. And then we'll fill this in. And I didn't just fill right to the bottom. I kept the full shape of that little feather flower right there. So I'm going to follow right down to the bottom. Okay. And let's put our straight edge on. And we'll go to the other one. You could even mark the center. I'm kind of vaguely just estimating right there. It's all going to work out. I don't need to be too perfect. Make the bigger circle first and then your little inner one. Okay. And then I'll travel on the circle, make my little petal. One, two, kind of right to the middle. Curl him around in the ribbon and travel sort of right back. And then we'll do one, two, and make sure you make the petal all the way in. And then we'll just tack it off right here. All right, got that. All right, where are we? I can't find it. Oh, here we go. All right, there you go. So it just puts a little fill in there. It's kind of fun and kind of feathery. If you wanted more fill, you can fill this outer part right here of this area or not. You know, I, I mean, if you wanted to just put a little fill like this right in here, you could, and that would certainly make some parity with those but that's gonna help to fill up that space just a little bit. So it's not quite so open. I felt like this was too much openness compared to the rest of the fill that we've done in other areas because we have a lot of fill on this piece. So one of the things that you wanna think about as you're doing any kind of detailed fill is keeping that detail fill balanced, right? Because you don't wanna have too much fill in one space and not enough in the other. And then the quilt kind of looks out of balance. I'll give you an example. Right here, the fill on this is very, very tight. And this has more quilting and actually so does this side right here. It doesn't have a lot of detail quilting, but we'll, we'll get to that later. But it makes this look disproportionate with all of this openness right here. So at some level, I'm going to probably put a little echo right there that will end at the middle. So there'll be a little triangle fill and another little triangle fill. It's just help this be a little more balanced and it'll act as a frame. So there'll be like a quarter inch echo around all of this and a little triangle frame. And that'll help make this look a lot more balanced. Are you doing anything in the corners on the last one that you just did? Um, so the, the ones that we just did for today, is we did this corner right here. We did some fills on this. We did this little curvature and the little straight line fill. And we are gonna be filling in both of those, which we, we showed that already. And then we're gonna do matching feathers. So the two corners that are opposite will have this matching feather right there. And on this one right here, I'm, I'm gonna put another fill in here as well. So, this does not have a distinctive separation either here or on the bottom. So I'm gonna put in another arc on the bottom to create a little two space area and put something in the bottom. And then I'm not sure, or I might echo this on the inside perhaps to create an inner area and a, and a separation. I'm not sure, but I think this is too open for the space that we need and I want to have some separations here. The one I just did with the triangles. 
Hmm. You mean this one that we just did? This is the one that we just did, these ones. So what I had suggested is possibly putting a little fill right in this part of the circle right there. So I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I will. We'll figure that out. So I thank you guys for coming back. Um, I don't know. Technology is always a challenge. It's a pain. It, um, let me check for questions real quick. Let's see what we have. Susan, I, I hope that I answered your question. Um, the last triangle that I did was this one. So I think I will, like I said, put a little fill right in the little circle area, but that's probably about it. I'm not going to fill this part, and I'm not going to fill around it. I think that's too much. Okay, so let's see. But we still have just a couple of end areas. We have these two areas on the end. We, I want to put a little fill in here with the, like a muscle type of design. And honestly, I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with this one. I haven't decided. <laughs> He's kind of busy and, and compact. So I think it's hard to maybe put something else on him. I think what I might do is just square this off and put an echo and then fill around the echo. That's probably gonna be the easiest one to make some highlights and maybe just a tiny bit of fill right in these little fingers right there. Okay, and then, oh, on the half, you're saying right there. I see it. Thank you, Mary Ann. You're talking about these little guys. I don't know, that's a good question. I don't think that, uh, I think I might just echo in there. I might just put a little straight line echo just to fill that in. He's pretty small, and I don't think we need to crowd anything in there. That'll act like a little frame on the little butt ends. <laughs> you know, so many times I wish I, I wish you were just right here with me so we could all just talk at the same time. So, yes, I don't think I will. I think he's a little bit small, so I think I'm just going to put a little echo in there and leave him alone. Okay, so we've got this corner left, and then we are going to do something else in the center. I, I want to mention just real quick. When we do this, this week, I'm actually gonna echo, and I'll, let's draw it real quick so you can see what I'm saying. Let me get my pen out. I feel like this space needs to be broken up. So what I plan to do is put in a little echo like this all the way around, and then I'm actually gonna echo that and create a bigger, a wider echo, like half inch, maybe three quarter inch. That'll give us some space to actually fill. And then this will be open. And then we'll probably put another one in that will go like this. Right? And then we can have some different spaces for us to fill. So that way, we're not trying to work with this big whole thing. We're going to make some breakup spaces, and then those spaces can be fillable. Okay? So that's my plan. So I'm gonna go ahead and work on those and I'll put that picture out um, on fabricated quilts once I decide, because we wanna have a little plan ahead of how many spaces that we need and then we'll fill those in in our next session. Okay, so we have, I think we have one, two, about three more, three more things that we need to do. Okay, all right. So have a great day, and thank you guys. I appreciate your patience with our technology challenges, and have a great day. Happy quilting.